Christina Hilson and the yet candidate Draupadi Mumu all set to become India's 15th and first ever tribal president after securing healthy lead over opposition backed candidature Yashwan Sinha. After conclusion of the second round of vote counting Murmu leads by a margin of 480 votes. Supreme Court puts stay on Nagaland police proceedings against 30 army personnel booked in connection with the killing of 14 civilians in Oting last year. The Apex Court observes that state police did not abstain prior sanction for prosecution from Union government under Section 6 of AFSPA. Nagaho demands Prime Minister Narendra Modi's intervention into the Indo-Naga peace talks for early and permanent solution to Naga political issue. Submitting a memorandum to the Prime Minister, Nagaho also demands repealment of AFSPA from the state in order to restore peace. Nagaland Gonbura Federation calls up on Prime Minister Narendra Modi saying that it is the right time for him to fulfill his promises made to Nagas. NGBF also appealed center to ink an acceptable and honorable Indo-Naga political agreement without further delay. Over enforcement directorates summon to Congress President Sonia Gandhi on Thursday in the National Herald case, Nagaland Pradesh Congress Committee slams PJB government for harassing the Gandhi family. NPCC alleges that Modi government is using government agency as a tool to, gar to target and systematically silence the party. After Rahul Gandhi, Congress President Sonia Gandhi grilled by Enforcement Directorate for three hours on Thursday. Earlier, Sonia Gandhi was summoned for interrogation by the government agency over alleged money laundering in the National Herald case. Good evening, viewers. Welcome you all to English Primetime News. I'm Asan. Let's look into details now. India on Thursday will know who will succeed incumbent Ram Nath Govind to become the country's 15th president as counting of votes for the presidential election is underway at the parliament house. Ruling NDS Draupati Murmu and opposition's Yashwant Sena are pitted against each other in the contest. With votes clearly stacked in favor of Murmu, who, if elected, will be the first tribal woman to occupy the top constitutional post in the country. India on Thursday will know who will succeed incumbent Ramnath Govind to become the country's 15th president, as counting of the votes for the presidential election is underway at the Parliament House. Ruling NDS, Draupati Murmu and opposition's Yashwan Sena are pitted against each other in the contest. With votes clearly stacked in favor of Murmu, she is on the verge of winning and becoming the first tribal woman to occupy the top constitutional post in the country. Following the completion of second round of vote counting, the NDA candidature has gained a healthy lead over her rival Yashwan Sena. As per the latest updates, NDA candidate Murmu has got 809 votes out of 1,138 valid MP votes, while Yashwan Sena has managed to back 329 votes out after the second round. Meanwhile, the ongoing President Ramnath Govind's tenure as president will end on July 24 and the new president is scheduled to take oath on July 25. As the entire country is dancing in tunes of Draupati Murmu, today as the country is set to get its next president in few hours. 
While the result has not been declared yet, the margin of votes received by the two candidates shows stark difference. After the conclusion of second round of voting, where votes of first 10 states in the alphabetical order were counted, Draupati Murmu got 809 votes, while Yashwan Sena backed 329 votes out of 1,138 valid votes. When it comes to vote value, Murmu's vote value stands at 1,5299, while Yashwan Sena is distant behind after being able to accumulate 44,276 vote value as per the latest briefings. Earlier, according to results of first round counting, Murmu has backed 540 votes, while Sina has received only 800, 208 votes. This result is hinting towards a predictable win for Murmu. Meanwhile, the PJP party workers across the country have started to celebrate the win of presidential candidate Draupati Murmu. In view of this, the party Ajanta party Nagaland carried out a procession from Jayan Mandir to GS Road to Dobinala to City Tower and to Jandir Jain Mandir from the same route. GP Bharatiya Janata Party Nagaland Unit Prajit Khani to celebrate Kuri Nejara election laga candidate Mohan laga presidential candidate Drobodi Murmu ta lead Kuri Nejara laga dhan babna aitya jiti ne jitu bolle position de ta gala dhan celebrate Kuri Nejai thakhi she aro edibra dhan Jain Mandir pra start Kuri Nejara dhan city tower tak jese aro city tower pra aro dhan return aitya aase apni khan piche de sahi dhan dhan lagun ba kun ba members khan to aitya tak return aitya punchi jese aro kun ba dhan aitya tak bi brand khan lo ine dhan celebrate Kuri ne aro manu khan lo the public khan to milig ne celebrate Kuri ne dhan aitu aya so gani bi to Mohan apni khan korjana और व्यूअर्स और वो एक बार अपनी के जनाइ दे वो और द्रोपति मुर्मु वहाँ ला प्रेसिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट ताय एनडीए गवर्नमेंट पर खराब हुई ने बीजेपी पर ताय के बीजेपी रिप्रेजेंट करी ने ताय खराब हुई ना से कोई ने मोहन चना से और ताला का वोट ताय लीड करीन था का तो हुई ले ताय थ्री लैक सेवेंटी एट थाउजेंड ल निमापुर प्रदेश से और निमापुर लगा तादें नगालें लगा पूरा यूनिट खान तो भारतीय जनता पार्टी लगा था हम सब मिले ही ना जेदे सेलिब्रेट करें सुखने तो भी अपने हाथ के चना से और इधर सेलिब्रेशन तो प्रेसिडेंशियल कैंडिडेट द्रोपदी मोर मोर लगा ऊपर दे ताई जीती वाला ऊपर दे आता है प्रेसिडेंट करने खरा� in a big blow to the family members of victims in infamous Oting killing, the Supreme Court has state Nagaland police proceedings against 30 army personnel who were earlier booked in connection with the killing of 14 civilians in Nagaland's Mon district in December 2021. A bench of justices, Indira Banerjee and V. Rama Subramania stated that the police, state police did not obtain prior sanction for prosecution from Union government under Section 6 of Armed Forces Special Powers Act. Notably, in a disturbing incident, the 21 Para Special Forces mistook a group of workers who were returning from a coal mine as insurgents and indiscriminately opened fire resulting in the death of six civilians. Following which, eight more civilians and a soldier were killed in the violence that followed. Meanwhile, Nagaland police have stated that army did not follow standard operating procedure and rules of engagement for, for operation. However, petitioners are demanding for squashing of FIR related to the incident, citing that army personnel were just carrying out their bona fide duty. In addition, the Supreme Court also stated that the cause of death of paratrooper who lost his life during the incidents had not been investigated yet.
The Nagaland Gaonbura Federation, the apex body of village chiefs of the state, has called up on Prime Minister Narendra Modi, saying that it is the right time for Prime Minister to fulfill his assurance to Naga people. NGBF also appealed Government of India to ink an acceptable and honourable Indo-Naga political agreement without further delay. And GBF loaded the move of the Parliamentary Core Committee on Naga political issue, wherein it adopted the four-point resolution during on July 16. NGBF also stated that the move has come at the right time for the people of Nagaland. It further stated that resolutions taken by core committee on behalf of all the 60 elected members of Legislative Assembly reflects the voice of Naga people. In its statement, the Federation state that core committee has met the right appeal to Union government to settle this issue with formal political talks coming to an end on October 31, 2019. In a memorandum, Nagahoho has urged Prime Minister Narendra Modi to personally monitor the Indo-Naga peace talks for early and permanent solution to Naga political issue. Furthermore, the Hoho also reminded the Prime Minister of how the peace process was initiated by the government of India in 1997. In addition, the HOHO has also mentioned about the three conditions put forth by the government of India in 1997 in return of peace talks. These conditions were talks should be unconditional, talks should be at the highest level, namely the prime ministerial level and venue of the talk should be outside India. Meanwhile, the HOHO has also asked the government to repeal the Armed Forces Special Powers Act from Naga in habitat areas in order to create favorable environment for constructive engagement. Also, the Ho Ho talked about how seven years have gone since the signing of the historic framework between the government of India and NSCN brought great joy and hope in the lives of Naga people. But the political issue still remains unresolved till death. And also, the Ho Ho said that the people are now polarized between the two arguments, which are the framework agreement of 2015 and the agreed position of 2017, while reminding the Indian government about the delicate nature of Naga political issue. The Ho Ho asked the government to introspect on Nine Point Agreement 1947, Sixteen Point Agreement 1960, and infamous Shillong Accord 1975, as it failed to bring understanding between the Nagas and the government of India. Following enforcement directorates summon to Congress President Sonia Gandhi to appear before the agency in the National Herald case on Thursday, massive outrage by party workers what was witnessed across various places in the country. Similarly, in Nagaland, the state unit of the party hold protest over Sonia Gandhi's grilling and addressed a press conference at Dimapur Congress Bhawan. Addressing the media, the NPCC officials slammed PJP government for misusing ED for harassing the Gandhi family. NPCC working president and treasurer Bobby Panikar alleged that Modi government is using ED as a tool to target only the Congress and to systematically silence the party. NPCC Vice President Alam Chungshi pointed out that no political party has been summoned by the ED except Congress, assuring that it is only Gandhi family who cares for the welfare of the people. He said that PJP has no plan nor direction that leads to anywhere. Meanwhile, NPCC President K. Tire said that India has lost its democracy at the hands of PJP government as such agencies like national investigation agencies, CBI and ED are 
being brought through the taxes that people pay to government. Thierry stressed that people expect agencies and public servants to have a higher mental rating, bringing justice and to give equality. But unfortunately, these people are being misused and being played by political hands. Defining Modi as a fascist leader, Thierry further said that he is no more different from Hitler. Notably, the National Herald is a newspaper started by several leaders including Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru in the year 1937 to give voice to the freedom movement in the country. Coming into every state, we are in that condition. Actually, in 2012, BJP leader Subramaniam Sami has filed a case in a lower court complaining, alleging that... Uh, you know, the Associated Journals as uh, uh, fund was mismanaged by some Congress leaders and taken over by Young India. And uh, that is how this case was going on for so many years, it was kept pending. Now, when the BJP headed by Narad Modi and Amit Shah, they don't have anything to attack them, they started this, again, raised up this question. Now, you are seeing in India what is happening. Anybody raising the OIS again is the party, they will send ED, they will send income tax, they will send CBI and harass them. Without even a prima facie case, they will arrest them. Normally, anybody is arrested after thorough inquiry is made and if a prima facie it is proved, then they are arrested. But today it is not like that. But today, unfortunately, these people are being used. And they are playing in the hand of political parties like Modi, who has turned to become a fascist. He, he is no more different from Hitler of Germany. Hitler has used all his Taking a dig at center over various issues emerging in India, including GST hike on various products and false propagation spread by PJP and PCC's former chairman of minority department, Rajesh Siti, alleged against Modi's government for increasing taxes on essential products such as curd, roti and milk. Siti continued saying that when Modi served as Gujarat chief minister, he stood against price rise issues. Issues. However, today it is opposite of what he claimed of himself. Seti went on to say that there was a time when Modi said India's economy has fallen down. However, today India's 80 rupees stands equal with one USD dollar. However, UNSUI President K. Chopika Sumi also speaking on PJP misusing the social media platform and media houses to spread false propaganda. Chopika highlighted that in order to educate and ensure the people about truth, they have identified 20 WhatsApp groups while 15 are in process. We have to think of that we have to bring back Congress again so that we can have the at least what we are enjoying before 2014. So the BJP uh, cleverly uses this social media and media houses to spread their propagandas, to spread the false narratives. Manuel. The Nagaland unit of Janata Dal United on Thursday slammed both the center government as well as the state government and leveled allegations that both Modi and Rio government are reluctant to solve the Naga political issue. Addressing media at Hotel Saramati of Dimapur, the JTU questioned why there has been no action taken by the government to solve crucial issues of separate flag and constitution which has delayed the whole process. The party also highlighted that since the Naga political issue is a unique issue, therefore the solution should also be unique as well as both flag and constitution issues should be addressed. The party demanded that the government should make it clear that whether they are willing or capable of solving the issue or not. They also reminded the government that it should honor the commitment made to Nagas and walk the talk. But it seems that instead of finding way to solution, the rulers are looking for an escape route. 
to though the party appreciated core committee on Naga political issues efforts to resolve the long pending political issue it further stated that the committee has become irrelevant and their mission is bound to fail due to a vague objective criticizing core committee JDU went on to say that the committee has been reduced to a merge messenger having no principal stand of its own calling the committee as irrelevant JDU also demanded that being a failure to solve the matter the United Democratic Alliance must be dissolved Despite sacrificing so much of state issue and coming out with this core committee, yet we have finally learned that it was not a truly intended mission to bring about a solution. It wasn't. Otherwise, how can they be just a mere messenger? Conveying messages between two negotiating parties. As it has been said, they have the authority to give such a strong pressure to both the negotiating parties and the, uh, <clears throat> to both the negotiating parties. Today, we all know that flag and constitution has become the two contentious issue. Has the government of, has the oppositionless government taken any stand on this? No. They have to take a stand. I'm, I'm sure that the press fraternity is aware about the stand of the GDU. We, our stand is very... Reacting over issue of being the chief ministerial candidate of Naga People's Front in the forthcoming state assembly elections, NPF Legislative Party leader Kuzoluzo Azonino has cleared the air that the decision will be taken by party only. Nino's clarification comes in the wake of a press bureau statement by the party, wherein the party cited the UDA co-chairman as the chief ministerial candidate. Azo also said NPF will disclose the name by December end or first week of January 2023, just ahead of the assembly election. Besides that, on his earlier statement that any party leader or worker from NDPP or PJP joining NPF was unique, strange and also a blessing in disguise, Ninu clarified that he had said nothing about lack of confidence on NPF leadership. He said that anyone who was not treated well or mistreated or sidelined was most welcome to join NPF and take shelter as NPF was a party for the Nagas. Mukokchong Battalion Assam Rifles conducted a pre-recruitment training for youth of Nagaland at Mukokchong headquarters on Thursday. The event aimed at providing employment opportunities and prepare local youth to join the Indian Army and Assam Rifles for upcoming recruitment rallies. The battalion installed online registration desk cam documentation check facility which received good response from youth seeking to join the security forces. Reportedly, a total of 240 candidates registered for Assam Rifles, Technical and Tradesman Rally and 100 candidates for Indian Army Agnipat Scheme until today has joined. Altogether, 105 potential candidates, including 103 boys and two girls from Mukokchong, Mon, Perrin, Woka, Dimapur, Longleng, Zinapoto and Twensang took part in the training. During the campaign, Pamphlets bearing details of Agnipat schemes were distributed. It can be noted that the Mukokchong Battalion will begin imparting full-fledged training to the youth from effectively from July 25. The training will instill confidence and improve standards for both physical and written tests. The noble gesture of Assam Rifles received overwhelming response from youths and local populace. A 
state level review meeting on fostering climate resilient upland farming system in Nagaland was held at Hotel Jaffu in Kohima on Wednesday. During the meeting, all project activities in the eight districts were reviewed and discussions on various components of projects held. Agriculture Production Commissioner and Mission Director of Focus Nagaland Y. Kikito Sema revealed that Focus project was effective in 2018 and it was officially launched in January 2019. However, due to onset of COVID pandemic, the project could not be implemented as planned. Sema further stated that some of the project activities were still under convergence and post challenges. However, he expressed optimism that with collaborative time effort of project team and agri and allied department, the project will be effectively implemented. Waikikido Sema also stated that external aided projects are very important for the state and he also revealed that work bank sponsored project for farming sector will be implemented in the state very soon. Director of Agriculture Ben Yantan also urged project team members to work sincerely and help achieve objectives of the project. The meeting was attended by Agri and Allied departments and project team members from district and state offices. Ziliang Students Union of Nagaland has expressed concern over the irregular power supply at Perrin District and also stated that the issue has caused problems in the normal day-to-day -day functioning of common people of the area. In addition, the Students Union has mentioned that the situation has worsened with the onset of monsoon season. Furthermore, the student union mentioned that the power supply remains for only 4 to 5 hours in a day. Also, sometimes the power supply is cut in the area for a period of 2 to 3 days. In this regard, the students union has asked the concerned authorities to take immediate actions and provide regular power supply. The Nagaland Olympic and Paralympic Games 2022 is set to start from August 22 and continue till August 27. In addition, the Nagaland Olympic Association Secretary announced the 11 disciplines for which competitors will compete. These disciplines are archery, athletics, badminton, basketball, boxing, football, shooting sport, taekwondo, table tennis, tennis and wushu. Meanwhile, the online registration for the various sporting events are to continue till August 13 and the players can't register. At the same time, the Nagaland Olympic Association has requested all districts to appoint Chief D Mission, Deputy Chief D Mission and District Team Manager. Furthermore, the association has also asked the appointed officials to submit their name, contact number and email address by August 15 to the given email ID. The enforcement officials of Koima Regional Transport Officers will conduct routine checking of compliance of vehicles on road as per Motor Vehicles Amendment Act 2019. Further, if anyone found guilty, they will be subject to penalty as per the law. Meanwhile, the Regional Transport Office, in reference to the decision taken during its meeting on July 6, has decided not to entertain any application seeking transport permit for local or regional taxis. Two wheeler taxi or the city buses till further notice.
The program was held on Thursday at the Directorate Conference Hall of the Department of Soil and Water Conservation to commission the mobile testing laboratories and launch a three days capacity building program on mobile soil testing. Meanwhile, the guest of honor for the program was Chief Secretary J. Alam and special guest, Minister of Sto Soil and Water Conservation, Geology and Mining, and SMDC V. Kashiho Sanctum. Agriculture Production Commissioner Y. Kikado Sima, in his keynote address, mentioned that agri and allied departments were left with no schemes for more than 25 years. Sema also announced on installation of two automatic weather systems in Lumami and spoke about the importance of the automatic weather system, which is important for the farming community. While J. Alam in his speech acknowledged and encouraged soil and water conservation department for their work. Sanctum mentioned that the labs in Nagaland are fully equipped with proper equipments and devices. Congratulating the department officials and other parties involved, he requested them to use the device in a very systematic way. Furthermore, he also made it known to the Agri and Allied Department to use the facilities at any time for productive use. Uh, time during that Republic Day function, yeah. I flagged off those uh, block level laboratory equipments uh, at the Republic Day time. Then uh, district level laboratories have also come and now you are doing mobile labs so in my view we are now saturated we are saturated testing facilities are available now at the doorstep of the farmers and i'm sure the department of soil and water conservation has the necessary technical manpower to carry out this task then in a very short time, it should be possible for us to give a soil health card to every land holding. July 23 shall be observed as a street Vendors day in Dimapur. The Dimapur Municipal Council and District Urban Development will be jointly organizing Street Vendors Day as a part of Sav Nidi Mahotsav at supermarket area in Dimapur. MLA Muatushi Longkamer has consented to grace celebrations as special guest. As part of the celebrations, street vendors will be sensitized on loan schemes and various other schemes that will help boost their businesses and promote local businesses. The organizers have urged all street vendors to attend celebrations and benefit from the program. The program will be sponsored by District Urban Agency and various organizations like the DMC, Health and Family Welfare, Labor Department, Food and Civil Supplies and banks will attend the program. A resting shed was inaugurated by the additional deputy commissioner of Chozupa, Imokukpa, at the base of Tuvo Pisui Lake, which is about four kilometers away from Tuvo Pisumi village in Peg district on Wednesday. While addressing the crowd, the deputy commissioner appreciated the initiatives taken by Tuvo Pisumi Youth Association in constructing the resting shed. Meanwhile, she also urged the youth to take the advantage of the social media platforms to popularize the places and forests. In addition, uh, she also insisted the villagers, especially the youth, not to wait for government but to initiate change from their own capacity. Congress Interim President Sonia Gandhi was interrogated by the Enforcement Directorate for three hours on Thursday. Sonia Gandhi was summoned for interrogation by the ED over alleged money laundering in the National Herald case. Initially, it came to light that the ED called off interrogation for the day upon the request of Gandhi, who is recovering from cold infection. However, Congress leader 
Jai Ram Ramesh declined the reports by saying that the government agency has no more questions left for Sonia Gandhi, who even herself insisted to stay till evening if required earlier in the day. The Congress president arrived at the ED headquarters with her Z plus category C RPF security cover. After completing some formalities, the ED officials began questioning Gandhi around 12.30 p.m. Reacting strongly towards treatment meted out to Sonia Gandhi, Congress leader Sachin Pilot slammed the center for putting Gandhi through rigorous interrogation without any FIRs or criminality. Pilot went on to slam the BJP saying that the party's sole objective is character assassination and silencing voices of opposition members. मैं इंदिरा जी की बहू हूँ और किसी से नहीं डरती Congress MP Gaurav Gogoi gave an adjournment motion notice in Lok Sabha on Thursday to discuss the misuse of investigation agencies such as the Enforcement Directorate and Central Bureau of Investigation by the central government. In his, in his notice, Gogoi mentioned that these agencies were envisaged to be independent agents of the Indian democracy. He also highlighted Supreme Court's emphasis on the importance of the independent functioning of these agencies via several judgments. Gogoi further slammed the ruling party, stating that the searches by these investigative agencies were overwhelmingly conducted on members of the opposition. Congress MP stressed on these agencies and said that they are being used as a tool to curb opposition in the nation. MP further said citizens should be able to place their full faith in these agencies for which these agencies need to remain insulated from political incentives. Hence, Gokoi noted that this matter is central to the core values of democracy, making it both urgent and necessary for an informed discussion in Parliament of India. West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee, while speaking at a Martyrs Day rally in Kolkata on Thursday, urged the people to turn 2024 into rejection election for PJP at the center. Chief Minister Banerjee called upon the people to displace PJP and install pro-people government at the center. Chief Minister even challenged that PJP will not win majority at Lok Sabha in 2024. DMC Supremo also slammed the center for imposing hike in GST on essential daily items. Banerjee asserted that the PJP had lost its mind and mocked the center for imposing GST on puffed rice, sweets, lassi and curd. Banerjee also slammed centers moved to impose GST on sick people's hospital bed. She went on to attack the PJP for rising prices of fuel and gas cylinders and privatization of banks. Chief Minister Banerjee also accused the PJP of devising Agnipath recruitment scheme to recruit its own forces. Chief Minister further attacked central government for withholding state funds. She went on to claim that they are not afraid of PJP navigated central agencies like the ED and CBI. Banerjee asserted that they will fight and win against the PJP. Nationalist Congress Party on Wednesday dissolved all political party departments and cell throughout India. NCP President Sharad Power on Wednesday officially dissolved all party units. President Power's move was announced by NCP National General Secretary. Praful Patel on his Twitter handle. Until now, no official information or reason has been issued regarding move to dissolve party units. However, many are viewing it as a move to revamp party's working mechanism. NCP was a prominent party of the Maharashtra's Mahavikas Agati coalition government. MVA government was bloated out by Egnat Shinde's Chief Sena and BJP after claiming majority in the floor test.
The arrest of Pakistani national Rizwan Ashraf by border security force patrolling team while trying to sneak into India via the international border has exposed plans of Pakistan-based terrorist organization Tirik e Laibak. The arrest was made in Rajasthan's Sri Ganga Nagar district. According to information by Rajasthan's additional director general of police intelligence, as Senkatir Asraf was influenced by Tirik E. Labaik and he was on a mission to kill suspended PJP leader Nupur Sharma. Agencies like the Intelligence Bureau, CID, Border Security Forces, Indian Army and Lodge Glocal Police are currently interrogating Rizwan Ashraf. Soon after his arrest, Ashraf was produced before magistrate wh where he was remanded to aid the police custody. So viewers, that's all in the bulletin. Keep watching Nagaland TV. तूने अभी तक कुछ किया ही नहीं अरे ये तो लो क्वालिटी टंकी है